Here I am. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Kimberly's dad. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Wapner. You can call me Chuck or Champ. Or you follow boxing? Uh, no, I don't. No? You see Rocky? Chuck. You don't know me. You don't. Chuck Wapner. Well, you do know me, but you don't know you know me. Once upon a time, I was the heavyweight champ of New Jersey. I was the best. Hey, Dal, set my man up with whatever he wants. And some guy named Stallone wrote a screenplay inspired by me. I was like, what? It's the real Rocky. I told you you know me. The real Rocky. Well, everything's gonna be different now, baby. If you want to keep working, you're gonna have to stay famous. Sometimes life is like a movie. Sometimes it's better. Guys, congratulations on bringing the real Rocky story to the screen. Thank you. Never check what. Chuck, uh, as we see in the film, you 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 love that Rocky was made. You felt that that was your story, or at least inspired by you. What was it like for you? What's it been like to actually see your story now up on the screen? Uh, it's terrific, you know, because it's uh, much more like the real Rocky. Plus, we had uh, great people making the movie. We had Philippe, we had Liv, and... Uh, you know, it's it's been a great greatest moment of my life, really, to see the real Rocky. And where do we see Chuck too? That's going to see the rest of my life after I became a good boy. Then I was a bad boy and a good boy again. It'll be fun. Is there is there a Chuck two in development? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of. He's been talking about it a lot. I meant to mention that to you. I thought we were talking about a ten part series. Working title, Chuck, too. Uh, we have, you were part of this project for quite some time, right? Before, before it actually got off the ground. What were you so attracted to about Chuck's story? I think uh, uh, Mike Tolan brought it to me probably around about 10 years ago. And at that time, uh, I think he brought it to me just because he was trying to get his film financed and, and he knew I was a boxing fan. Uh, and I think initially I, I was really embarrassed and shocked that I didn't know Chuck's story um, as a fight fan. Uh, over the course of those 10 years, I had a couple of kids, and I was on a television show. And increasingly, the kind of cautionary tale about celebrity and fame uh, got more and more interesting to me. And then once we managed to convince Philippe to come on board, uh, there was no doubt in my mind that it was something worth doing. Uh, I want to hear more about Chuck's story and really get into it so people do know about it. But I, I'm curious, how did celebrity and fame suddenly, and the, the cautionary tale aspect of it suddenly become so much more fascinating to you? I don't know. I, I think we live in a, a relatively celebrity-obsessed culture. And, uh, think of one example right now off the top of my head. That would prove that. <laughs> uh, and I, I think um, that uh, there's something interesting, uh, you know, that Philippe and I talked about, too, that there's a story within a story within a story, and here's an actor telling a story about a fighter who's going through a story about identity and fame and celebrity. And I guess, uh, you know, once you go on television, uh, and I did a, uh, with, with a show called Ray Donovan for Showtime, um, suddenly your recognition factor increases tremendously. And how that impacts your life, I think, is something that people are really interested in, generally speaking. And I think Chuck's journey and the metaphor of a prize fight was one that I think both Philippe and I thought was a really compelling idea. And there's also the narratives that are created for you, not just through the character that you play on television, but the narratives that are created for you by the media or by the audience afterwards as well, which I, Chuck, as a character and I'm sure as a person also went through as well. We'd all like to believe what is said about us in the media, for the, for the most part, as actors, we have makeup artists to make us look attractive, trainers to do this stuff. We play interesting, intelligent people. We'd like to believe that we are those people, but what happens when you commit too fully to that belief is something that's really interesting to me. Um, not to say that that's Chuck's story, but I think Chuck, for a large part of his career, 
was fighting this doppelganger of himself. And that was uh, really interesting to me. Not necessarily fighting, but seeing himself in the media, or, or certainly that he perceived as himself in a way that was really interesting to us. Well, it's, hard to, it's harder to grow and mature as a person when there is a large group of people out in the world who view you as something you were before you started to grow or, or mature. Uh, Philippe, you, you do a phenomenal job directing this film, and as you were telling me in the green room, you know, you had very minimal budget, and you were working in a short amount of time, and you do a beautiful job of recreating this time. Can you talk about doing that? Um, knowing that we had limited resources for unlimited ambition, I knew that as a film director, I really had to stay close to the character and not try to show off in any way. Um, and it's, 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 it's tempting with the 70s because it's so sexy and we like the look, especially after 30 years and the music and the color and the clothing. We just made sure that we had the right people to set it up and then I developed this way of filming with my DP that we would stay close to the characters and see stuff through their point of views. And I think, I think that's one of the reasons why Liev asked me to do the film because he saw my other film and he knew that I would always put in the character first and foremost and not, never trying to, to, to show off. It's really easy nowadays with the technology to, sh to, to do all kinds of sophisticated camera movement. You have to ask yourself every time, why do I put the camera there? Who am I looking at? And why am I looking at that person in that way? I loved your opening credit sequence where uh, Chuck is just getting hit and we're viewing him mostly from behind his head and this idea of like each hit to the head, how's it, how does it affect him and he's bleeding and he's called the Bayonne Bleeder. Can you talk about concocting that, that, that sequence? Well, we wanted, first of all, we wanted a time cut that would go from like when he was 14 years old to like 35, so we needed something dramatic for that time cut. And again, for me, it was in, uh, a question of perspective, being with him. We're filming the back of his head, the focus is on the back, not on his opponent, and we're with him. We're taking these punches with him. But there was something playful about it in the way that uh, Chuck became famous because he was able to take some hard punches. And the more he took some hard punches, the more he, he, he became famous. And so celebrity was very much linked to the amount of punches he could take. So starting the film was that was, you know, uh, setting that up. Chuck, what was it like to be famous for being able to take punches? Well, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't only that. I could take a punch, but that was why I won a lot of my fights, because of the ability to take a punch and my condition. You know, it, uh, I trained hard. I knew I wasn't a great fighter. Like a lot of guys know they're great fighters, so they might, you know, slough off a little bit. But uh, in my case, I knew I had to train harder than everybody else, or at least as hard, in order to win fights. And uh, I didn't mind it too much. You know, it was, it was something that uh, stuck on me when I was early in my career. I think I fought, when I fought Sonny Liston, and uh, I was getting hit with punches, and um, I got cut up a little bit. I got 71 stitches, a broken nose, broken left cheekbone. But I kept coming, and I was, you know, I was in the fight. They stopped it uh, in the 10th round of a 10-rounder, and the only reason they stopped it, the referee asked me, how many fingers do I have up? And I said, how many guesses do I get? <laughs> and, you know, they... <coughs> They, uh, they thought I was a bit of a wise guy, but that's, you know, that's the way I fought. I, and, uh, I, think you know, another, uh, I think another thing that needs to be corrected, it's such a great story that Chuck was a 40 to one underdog against Ali and went f 15 rounds with him, that people actually forget the list of heavyweights that Chuck faced in his career oh, yeah. and was never knocked out. Uh, uh, also to add that he beat Terrell, he beat Hinky, he beat some incredibly talented heavyweights at a time when heavyweights were the main card. Uh, and it's just that it, Rocky and our film and, and many other films, it's such a dramatic story that the guy's a 41 underdog against arguably the greatest fighter who ever put on boxing gloves. The, so that I, 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 I just want to correct a little bit the, 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 the idea that Chuck is not a great boxer. I am not a great boxer. <laughs> so in playing Chuck in the movie, Chuck looks like he's not a great boxer, but Chuck is a great fighter.
Uh, talk about uh, the screenplay because you know we're we're saying all these incredible accomplishments of of Chuck's, and you could have written a movie like other boxing movies where he goes down in the beginning and then he starts training for the big fight that we're going to come to at the end of the film, which you know by and large is about ninety percent of boxing movies. Even some of the best ones are 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 still that. But you sort of go against the grain and and make something different. How how difficult was it to decide that and know that you still had the kind of uh, I think the kind of urgency that comes with sports films. I think most of that, I, I, I don't think I was ever uh, personally interested in making a boxing movie. And then I think once I talked to Philippe about what his thoughts were and ideas were about how to do this, A, I knew I'd found the right director, and, and B, I knew that um, what uh, uh, ultimately you're, you're trying to do is make a, um, without sounding precious, a humanist, film um, where you're observing what the characters are going through and rather than glorifying it or uh, making it something that it isn't, you're identifying with and feeling pathos for the characters because it feels like something that you know is real. Um, and one of the things I love about Philippe's uh, technique as a filmmaker, uh, which I think is a product of him having spent some time as a documentary filmmaker, is the kind of... Um, uh, simple, uh, naturalistic, verite approach to uh, how he shoots. And it also turns out that we probably couldn't have made this movie for the budget or in the schedule that we had had we not taken that approach. But part of the idea is, 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 a, is a kind of... Um, it's called rolling with the punches. Yes. A nod to Verite. As you were as you were working with the script over the course of ten years and, and trying to get the film made, did you find people a lot of people who tried to say, well, maybe put more of the boxing into it? You know, we'd be more interested in if, the, if there if there were more fights. No, no one really responded to it at all. So there was no idea. <laughs> it was wasn't until the last minute when Millennium and Avi Lerner said, yeah, we want to make the movie and we'll give you this, uh, that it happened, and then they didn't care about the script. I think uh, we didn't really worry or think much about the script until we got the green light, and then it was too late. We were sort of working desperately to fix things that we needed to fix and to design the film in such a way that it, that it felt like Philippe's film. Yeah. Well, for me, it was in something appealing that the, the boxing, the big boxing match was after 30 minutes. Yeah, that's, and I, I love that. It's contrary to most boxing Completely. films. It, it, it's like... It, it's as ingenious as killing your main character after the 30 minutes like in, in Psycho. You, you need to find out what it is about beyond uh, the boxing. And I like that the redemption doesn't come through this heroic moment, but through simple things in, in life and just finding the right person, finding uh, uh, the right person to love, you know, just the simple things. And I don't think I would have accepted the film if it, uh, it would have ended with the big uh, boxing fight. The only other, sorry, go ahead. No, no, that, that pre-existed my involvement in the script, though. That was, that was yeah. the original structure of the script. The only other boxing film that I can think of that actually has anything like that is, you know, the, possibly the greatest ever made, Raging Bull, which is like, in no way is that movie, le I mean, there is a big fight, but even that is like three quarters of the way or halfway through the movie, and then it's all about what does this guy do when all of this is over? How does he live the rest of his yeah, life? Yeah, I want to say something about that because I, I was tempted to look at all the boxing films before shooting this one, and I decided not to look at any of them. I'm not, I'm not a, you know, I was not a big boxing fan, not that I dislike the sport. I do enjoy the sport, but I, I was not a, a connoisseur, so I really had to do my homework, and I wanted to do it by watching real boxing uh, matches and the, the boxing match between him and Ali. And, and I didn't want to mimic anyone else's work. But yeah, Raging Bull always came back as some reference. But with Raging Bull, we are talking about the character is that, that, that uh, carries much more inner violence. Chuck is not that person. Chuck, for me, I fell in love with the character on the pages and then in real life, but uh, la a little bit later, because ultimately he's a very, very sweet person. Uh, and he moves me. And he, yes, you. No, no, no. But no. But He's it's important, Chuck. That. And I, I mean, um, and 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 of course, Chuck made some mistakes, and some of those mistakes are in the film. But you keep liking him, even on the pages. And I said, why? Why do I keep liking this guy? And I wanted to meet him. And the only excuse I found was to make the film. 
I think you also see in the way that you shoot the boxing that's in the film that you didn't look at films like Raging Bull or the way other people sh shoot boxing because in most movies and even Raging Bull it's very stylized the boxing and in this it feels much more realistic there's more hugging there's more falling there's sweat it's not like it's the messy. kind of very boxing is messy yeah. and we did a messy match and this guy took some real punches also from from Pooch All which is if you look Great Ali I have to say if, yeah and he, and he moves like him and and uh, um, so uh, you look at the, the 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 boxing film today, even Rocky back then. You don't. It's it, it, they're not real punches, uh, and so like credit to Tuliev, he took some real punches. How were those punches? <laughs> the punches that you took. How how were those? Oh, I'm fine. Don't worry. <laughs> no, uh, Pooch and I are sparring partners, so it kind of worked out nicely. Uh, we since we started working together on Ray Donovan, we've been training together in boxing, and I thought, wow, geez, Pooch would be a great Muhammad Ali, and and then we could work together. I, we were working on, I've done some fight choreography and we were working on Ray Donovan and we had two real boxers do some background work for us. And I watched these guys who were two sparring partners, by the way, professional fighters, hitting each other and they were making contact and uh, not hurting each other. And they knew each other so well, they knew, they knew their timing, they moved so well together that they could actually punch each other. And the great thing is that you see the sweat come off their heads, you see the hair move, you see the body percussively and when you're playing someone like Chuck, who would just walk through punches, it was really important to make that contact. I mean, I don't know if anyone ever counted the number of shots you took in that fight and just kept... 7,912. There it is. <laughs> and he just kept coming through them all the time. Just kept coming through, kept That's coming through. One fight, by the way. That's what I figured. <laughs> but I, I'd like to say something to Chuck. Uh, I, think I, never, I don't think I ever said that to you, Chuck. I, as an artist, I always give credit where credit is due in terms of inspiration. I need a moment of truth every time I go into a film or I, every time I find the subject for my next film. And when I read your story, I thought it was important also to give you part of the credit for this amazing uh, film that became like uh, Rocky. And for me, that moment of inspiration had to be uh, told. And, and we did partly that in our film. Chuck, I, you know, I have to ask, obviously it's a redemptive story, uh, but what was it like watching, you know, there's definitely you at your worst. We have plays you at times at your, at your worst, I would imagine. Like, what was it like watching that? And what's it like showing that to the world? Well, you know, I wanted the movie to be true to life. I didn't want to, anything glossed over. I don't want to be made to look better than I was, you know? I, I was just a tough guy that always had a lot of confidence in myself. As a matter of fact, the night before I fought for the title, I bought my wife a powder blue negligee and I gave it to her. And I said, I want you to wear this to bed tonight because tonight you're going to be sleeping with the heavyweight champion of the world. <laughs> anyway, after the fight, I come back to the apartment. She's sitting on the edge of the bed in the negligee. She says, am I going to Ali's room or he's coming to mine? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like my, uh, my, my wife, that was my second wife. That was fella. <laughs> who, by the way, is played by uh, Elizabeth Moss and does an unbelievable job. I am so happy with the cast that they assembled and the way that Philippe directed everyone. And uh, I was just, you know, we knocked down four or five different scripts I did anyway. Mike told us, I don't like the script, I don't like the characters, and I definitely didn't like the lead man until they came up with Liv. I wow, you got to be kidding me. Liv Schreiber, that's the guy. And then when Naomi jumped on board a little later on, I was just, I, I'm, I'm completely thrilled with the movie and I'm honored, absolutely honored that these guys were able to portray me the way they did. They did an incredible job. Go ahead, Lee. I, uh, thank you, sir. I think this, to speak to both points, that I, you know, uh, I, I want to give a little bit of credit to Sylvester Stallone, too, for Rocky, because I think he, he did a tremendous job with that, particular part of what I think, I personally believe is Chuck's story. And, and if you watch that fight uh, that night in Cleveland, uh, Marv Alpert's going around the arena and he's asking everybody how they, how they feel about this fight. And everybody's complaining that Ali, the greatest fighter in the world, is fighting this bum from New Jersey. They're saying terrible things about Chuck. And if you watch the fight carefully, by the seventh round, the entire audience is rooting for Chuck. 
he throws his hands up in the air at one point, and you just feel the energy in that house. Is how the hell is this guy doing this? And that was what I believe Stallone saw, and inspired him both as an artist and and as a, a fight fan to make that movie, which I think is totally inspirational, wonderful movie. But for us, this was the other part of that story. He had taken care of that business. The only thing is Chuck never got the credit for that. But that is what Chuck did that night in Cleveland. And it, it, if you're a fight fan, it's something that needs to be witnessed. Has, uh, has Sly seen the film? Did you guys work with Sly, Sylvester Stallone? I don't know. He was incredibly generous with us. We talked to all of us, uh, really helped me a lot understand his process for making Rocky and also his relationship with Chuck. Uh, he hasn't seen the film yet. The film's not out yet. But, he lent um, us his statue. He gave us his statue. He lent us his image, and he's been really generous, really, really good to us. So big thanks to Sly. Chuck, there's a there, there's a scene in the film where we have uh, playing you uh, auditions for I think it's is it Rocky Rocky two, that that uh, that audition, yeah. <laughs> was it were you that bad man? What's it, how did it? I was bad. You know, uh, <laughs> it was Rocky two. He wrote in uh, 22 lines in Rocky two. I was going to be Ching Webber, Chuck Webner. I was going to be his chief sparring partner, and he sent me the script and said, Champ, I want you to be in the film. You're my inspiration. I want to put you in Rocky two. Anyway, I went to Philadelphia after a two-day bender. I was out for two days. I was partying, you know. I showed up with the script. I didn't read well. It wasn't good. It was actually grotesque. Anyway, I threw the script down. I said, you know what, Sly, I'm not an actor. And I walked out. He chased me out in the hallway, and he said to me, Chuck, he picked up the script, by the way. <laughs> he said, Chuck, please take this somewhere. Read it again. I want you to come back. I want you in this movie. Anyway, I went to men's room, and I started reading the script, trying to hype myself up, punching the sides of the, the tin stalls of the bathroom. One guy came out with his pants halfway down. He said, Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. I said, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just reading for the part. Anyway, I went back in after about 40 minutes, and I thought I did better, but I'm not an actor. You know, I was in a couple other movies, The Gig and The Honor Society. I hold a SAG card for 35 years. I've been grandfathered in it. I don't pay any dues because I'm there over 30 years. But I'm just not an actor. You know? Great storyteller. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, I'm good at beating people up, but that's about it. <laughs> you know, so uh, I leave things up like that to, uh, to live. And, uh, you know, to see him on the set, like I said, these guys are awesome. They... They made something great out of something that wasn't really great. And I'm, like I said before, I'm thrilled to death to be here today and to have the movie been made about me. Uh, Leo, you know, you you've directed a movie and you've done a number of episodes of, uh, of Ray Donovan. Were you ever intending to direct this or were you worried about separate? Absolutely heads? not. No way. No. I, I needed help with this. And I, uh, I also think directing and acting simultaneously is a bad idea, generally speaking. It's very difficult to have any sense of, it's, you know, acting is really, it's a difficult gig, particularly when you're doing all this prosthetics and stuff, and um, yeah, there was no way I could have ever pulled that off. But, yeah. Let's get some uh, questions from the audience. Who has it right here? Okay. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, first of all, it is an honor to have you here, Mr. Webner. Uh, you and I met before, Mr. Schreiber, and I want to ask you a question. You've been a tough guy as Ray Donovan on TV. You're playing Chuck on film. And you've been on Broadway as Ricky Roma, a tough cookie. Which format do you prefer? Do you have future plans beyond Chuck, which looks to be amazing? And my mother and I, I grew up watching the Rocky movies, and to have you here is amazing. I'd like to know what your future plans are. I, you know, they're all so different, uh, doing theater and doing film and television, uh, and they complement each other. So uh, ideally, uh, in, a, in, a, in a perfect world, you, you, you get to do a little bit of all of them, because I think they all inform each other. So hopefully I'm going to try and keep that mixed bag thing going. Can I ask a Ricky Roma question really fast? Is that, are those the most fun lines to get to do as an actor? Like every day when you get to say some of those lines, do you just giggle inside? 
I, I did actually. It was. It, They're amazing. Yeah, it is. It is like it is like. I mean, Mammoth. That particularly that play. And that is, character. It's like group ping pong. <laughs> uh, next question. Hey. Um, so I know the that uh, the story takes place uh, in New Jersey, where uh, Chuck grew up. Uh, how much on location or? And the actual uh, locations from history did you get to shoot in? Oh, man. Uh, I went to scout the location in, in uh, New Jersey because of this tax credit thing. When you shoot, we all, we had to shoot in Brooklyn and Manhattan and North and Queens. And so we didn't shoot anything in New Jersey. And I really wanted to shoot in, in Bayonne, but it was not possible. You know, it, it works like that nowadays. It's just sad. Like 80% of the Hollywood movies are shot in, in Atlanta, no matter where it takes place in the story. So, but I was happy to do it in an environment where it, it still makes sense visually and also with the actors. You could find a very, you know, a, a group of actors here who could play the part and, and the dialect and, yeah. Let's be thankful we didn't have to shoot it in Bulgaria. That was on the table for a while. They came to us and they said, so, Bulgaria. And we both looked at each other like. And Louisiana also. Can you make Bulgaria I went to look scout like in Jersey? Louisiana. I went to scout in Louisiana. Really? And I came back and I said, I'm sorry, I'm sure, there, I'm sure there's a version of that film in Louisiana, but it's not going to be me. Well, we briefly talked about Elizabeth Moss. I mean, you guys have assembled a pretty in incredible cast. And I will say Elizabeth Moss, it, she's great, as she always is. And Michael Rappaport playing a character that I haven't really seen him play in a long time or if at all, like a lot more soulful and, 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 and thoughtful rather than just sort of motor-mouthed and, and hilarious. How did you guys think of him to cast? I, I don't remember exactly how it came to pass, but... Michael is someone that I always thought of as a real tri-state area actor and someone who, in my mind, was is of that world, a big sports fan, someone immediately knew who Chuck was and wanted to be a part of it because it was Chuck. You guys doing Chuck Webb now? Exactly. <laughs> Yo, for real, you doing Chuck? And I was like, yes, Michael, we're doing Chuck. Shit, yeah, man, come on. He has That's a, the truth. He That's has a, truth. A, a really beautiful moment at the end of the film that I don't think I've gotten to see Michael Rappaport really do uh, before. I think we have time for one more question. Uh, let's hear it. Hey, right Liv, um, you've done a lot of different action roles from X-Men, Ray Donovan, Salt, and pretty active guy. You know, was there any kind of special training that you did for this one? I mean, being, it's, you know, as an athlete. So I was just kind of curious what kind of, you know, went into that diet or anything special, you know, to get to that, you know, that level that Chuck is at. Well, I, 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 about 18 years ago, I did a film where I had to play a boxer, and I started at that point to, to, to train boxing to see what it was like, and I really loved it. I was a competitive fencer in high school and college, and I, I found there were a lot of parallels. I really enjoyed it. I don't fight. I, I spar. I, I'm, not a, I'm not a boxer. But one of the, to, another terrific thing that Philippe uh, gave to this film was a, a level of credibility where he wouldn't look at anything but uh, Chuck and Ali. And I was training a lot at that time because I was playing Ray Donovan. And as some of you may know, Ray Donovan is a sort of Southie enforcer. So he's a big muscular guy. And I was training to look like that. And uh, I got in front of Philippe. And Philippe was like, uh-uh, no, no, wait a minute. This is 1974. It's a different feel. It's a different look. And uh, one of the things that... Uh, Chuck doesn't get a lot of credit for is his conditioning and uh, his road work. Uh, there's no way he could have taken that punishment or fought those fights without I incredible uh, um, cardio uh, and stamina. And uh, so for me, it was like backing off the weights and the big high protein Ray Donovan thing. And then also the stress of shooting a movie with three weeks prep. I lost a lot of weight very quick. Guys, when can people see Chuck? Next Friday. Next Friday? Yes, it's coming in up. New York and Los Angeles. We open May 5th. Yeah. And then uh, to other cities uh, the, ne the next week. Congratulations, guys. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you.